Thank you. Um, yeah, on the Zinke land deal, um, to sum it up, I have to say that it's an unacceptable waste of taxpayer dollars. Um, and, you know, we've learned more and more as time has gone on. At first, there was no appraisal done. Now we know there were appraisals done. They may not have been for those ex exact, uh, you know, um, acres, but they included those acres. And they priced, uh, you know, the value of that at about a fourth of what we paid. Um, the thing that really is hard for me to understand is that the town council is presented with packets. Uh, every time they vote on items, the council, or the staff puts together packets for the council to review so they can be educated on what they vote on. I've read the actual packet that they were given on the Zinke land deal, and on page two of the packet, it says in black and white, $300,000 per acre. This is undeveloped land. Um, before the appraisal, uh, you know, we found the appraisals that they came out and put them at a fourth the price. I said on the campaign trail, that's about four times the price I would expect to pay. So I don't know if the, the packet wasn't read or if it wasn't understood, but uh, we have to do better on that. I know appraisals were already required, so we've made a big deal about requiring appraisals. They were already required. The buck stops with the council. We have to know what we're doing. We have to know what we're voting on. Um, if I was honored to be elected, I want people to know I'm very thorough. I've made a name for that, that I, I do my research, and I make sure I understand what it is the issue that's before me. And um, I would not allow that kind of a, an expenditure to take place. Thank you. Given the information that we had in front of us at the time, it was presented, perceived, and accepted by the town council as the best deal that we could put together to acquire two large parcels of land, and especially the one at Greenfield and Germain, in a location that met the parameters that were set by the town council and a special events venue study that was done. One of the, the major uses for this, one of the parcels of land, is intended to be our version of Westworld. I've referred to it as a special events venue. It could include equestrian facilities, possibly the new home for Rodeo Park. Those plans still have to be uh, finalized. But when we were looking at this, the Zinke land was not the first parcel that we looked at. One of the first parcels happens to be the corner where the Mormon church, I'm sorry, the Mormon temple is now going. That parcel was, was taken away from us. It was not available. We were looking for freeway access. We were looking for a parcel large enough to be an economic generator for the town in terms of, as I said, something like a smaller version of, of Westworld. With 2020 hindsight, was it a good deal? Absolutely not. I'll be the first one to admit that. But the town of Gilbert builds regional parks. We depend on our uh, land development codes, our development standards to have the, the master plan communities build the community parks. We built the large parks for the region. And at that time, parcels the size of the two that we bought were becoming more and more scarce. If the economy had stayed up, we would not be having this, this discussion. Wonderful. I think that the Zinke land purchase was a bad idea. Uh, it was the right, line, right land, it was the right location, the right time, it was the wrong price. Uh, looking back at similar purchases around then, we have the fire training center, we have the flood basin, additional properties that were paid similar amounts, none of which had appraisals on them. Um, <clears throat> as we've seen over the last couple of months, as information comes out about the land deal, um, there wasn't appraisals, there were appraisals, they weren't the exact appraisals, and now it's been given over to the Attorney General's office to review to see if there was any wrongdoing there. I sincerely hope and think that nothing on the council was done illegal or to um, permanently negatively affect the members. I just think it was a complete oversight by the council members. We don't know what happened in the executive sessions, and that's by design. Uh, I would love to be able to have that information become public. Um, I, I wish that we could waive that attorney-client privilege, uh, but thus far that has not happened. 
Um, going forward, they have done some things to put things in place uh, where they now are mandated to get the appraisals, to get the attorney signatures. Um, I think and I wish at the time, uh, as I understand the biggest purchase in the history of Gilbert didn't have those things done. Um, and at least we've not been told about those things. That would never happen in the private industry. That could not happen where you buy large parcels of land without the appropriate appraisals because the banks wouldn't fund it. Um, it was an oversight by town staff and by town council. Uh, and I hope that we've learned our lesson with that. And it was a huge amount of money to learn that type of lesson. In 2007, when I was running for the council, consistently what I heard from our neighbors in the southern region of our community was that there were not enough <coughs> large parcels of land for parks, amenities, in their region of the community. As was stated by our vice mayor, the town of Gilbert has large regional parks. They are all located within the northern section of our community. In 2007, it was a dramatically different economic cycle at that time. Land was being bought and sold, you know, just immediately. And the town council knew that we needed to ensure for the southern portion of our community those same amenities. And so we charged the town manager at that time George Pettit with locating like size parcels in the southern region to what was available in the north. We have a large number of children in our communities and there are literally challenges on a weekly basis to accommodate those kids involved in recreational use in our parks as they currently exist. And with that dynamic growth, and with the lessening availability of those large parcels, as I said, we sent George Pettit out to locate those. The town council actually purchased four such areas. Two, known as the Zinke parcel, are what are getting the attention. It was not known to the council that our procedures were not followed by Mr. Pettit. When that became discovered to us, we have redone our procedures to ensure that appraisals will be done on the acquisition of large parcels in the future. Those mistakes have been acknowledged, but I believe that the investment in parkland in 2007 that was finalized in 2009 over the long run will benefit the community where they are located, but that the lessons that have been learned have been important for not only our council, but future councils as well in terms of making sure that the procedures are followed by our staff. Great, thank you. Uh, the transaction happened uh, more than two years ago. I wasn't on the council at the time. I've only been on the council for about a year. And while hindsight really is 2020 on these kinds of things, it's clear that it wasn't the best deal that Gilbert could make. Uh, we didn't follow sound acquisition strategies when we did it, and we probably, as far as I can tell, didn't communicate very well why we were doing what we were doing when we did it. Um, my questions are kind of more strategic in nature um, as it relates to this or any of these parkland type transactions. And uh, you know, why did we need that land specifically? I, I never really got the specific answer to that question. And why did we need it right then? What was so pressing? I mean, we can't build anything on that land for years based on the money that we have available. So. But because those questions are more strategic in nature, I am grateful that this year we have kicked off uh, a parks master plan process. I, th I really feel like as we plan out the rest of time for Gilbert as it relates to parks, that we will be able to make uh, wise acquisition strategies that are well vetted through public, uh, public debate process. And, uh, and I think I look forward to that, being more strategic about those, uh, or at least explaining it, explaining the strategy behind it a little bit better than we have in the past. I'm also grateful for the acquisition strategies that we put in place, the, the policies and procedures. I think those will definitely stop something like this from ever happening again. And I, I will, as a real estate professional, bring my background to bear in the future as well and make sure that we follow sound procedures and that each deal that we do makes sense for Gilbert both now and in the long term. Thank you for the question. <clears throat> that acquisition was a very complex deal and it took about two years to put together 
and the market changed over that two year period. And so um, I think anybody that's sitting in their homes today can relate to when they purchased a home um, at the height of the, the real estate boom or um, soon after, uh, looks back now and says, boy, I don't know if that was a good decision I bought my house because now it's worth less than what I bought it for. And that's a phenomenon that's going on, going on throughout the nation. Um, but this was a complex deal because it wasn't just a land deal. It involved much more than that. There was rights away involved. There were uh, water rights involved. There was um, the, the, uh, the issue of the southern part of the community, Dan can relate to that, saying that, hey, we're not serviced very well down here. There was the perception that there was um, property that was only going to be available for a short time. It was currently uh, bids or, or opportunity or bids for, uh, for that property. Uh, some, there were some um, deals on the table to purchase that property. Uh, there were some apartments that were being proposed on that same property. And we figured it was the last chance we had to put together, piece together a large parcel where we could service the south end of the community. And, and so while we didn't know exactly what we were going to do with that, part, that property, um, the long-term idea was there would be a parks plan that would identify exactly what we'd do with it. There was two opinions from the council about what to do with it, but we thought we need to get that parcel now and then we can figure out exactly what to do with it in the future. Um, we have done some forensic back, uh, back looks at that uh, decision. That forensics investigation determined that there was a mistake made and it was not a policy to make sure that there was an appraisal. We fixed that immediately as soon as we figured that out. And the second thing is, when they went back, and twice we've done this, said that decision we made was not unreasonable. Given the, the holistic approach, everything looking at it, it's not just the price of the land, but everything that went with it, it was not an unreasonable decision. 